buildings. And the shocking thing about office buildings is not how much energy they use. They use a massive amount of energy, but how much they waste. All right, that was Philip Henderson. Philip is the senior advisor for the Natural Resource Defense Council. We'll hear more from Philip later as he talks about smart buildings and getting greener. But hey, if you want to know about green buildings, you've tuned into the right place. My name's Eric Stromquist, and this is Control Talk Now, your smart buildings podcast and videocast. I am joined, as usual, by the man, the myth, the legend. The one, the only, Kenny Smyers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hey, Kenny, welcome to the show, big dog. Thank you, Eric. It's great to be here again, and uh, I'm excited. It's a great day in Pittsburgh, about 40 degrees, and uh, getting ready for some football later on this afternoon, and uh, getting really excited for January 26th. Prairie Ballroom, McCormick Place. I can't wait. I can't Control either, Kenny. I'll tell you what. That's going to be big stuff, big dog, because it is the Control Trends Awards. The voting is done. So if you want to know who's going to win the award, you need to show up at the Control Trends Awards. And if you want to uh, know what the models look like, quit asking me and Kenny. We know they're going to be spectacular. You got to show up with awards for that as well. But, Kenny, it, it's, it's going to be uh, a spectacular show. It looks like it's sold out. I think we're going to have some standing room only tickets, uh, which shouldn't be an issue because, you know, we're going to get, you know, you're going to arrive around 530 ish, walk the red carpet. The show itself should start around 630 sharp. So you're going to have a couple of cocktails. You're going to have a little something to eat. Should be good even if you're standing. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be our Academy Awards where we come together and celebrate each other in our industry. So what do you think, Big Dog? Well, in addition to the great categories we have and the excitement that that's going to generate, because uh, it's a lot of close close uh, competition in these categories, and uh, just all great people, all great products, all great solutions. But we also have our uh, some very important things that uh, will be enlarging the, uh, the Hall of Fame, and uh, the P-Talk Award will be an exciting announcement. And we've got some good surprises. We've got some entertainment there, and we've got uh, just an exciting environment. You know, it's it's going to be the closest thing our industry comes to the the, uh, the Hollywood, uh, you know, red carpet. We've got a Control Trends red carpet, and it's going to be a great step and repeat area that uh, that uh, honors uh, our sponsors that support us and make this all possible. So it's going to be some uh, great great things to do. So please come as early as you can. Uh, the show starts punctually at six o'clock. Uh, it's business casual. Uh, you can write for the floor uh, at the AJR show and, and join us. But if you can get there a little bit early, I think it's very exciting, and you get to participate in a little of the pre-event uh, activities. Yeah, Kenny, the pre-events are going to rock and roll, big dog. We, we, that's always a good time. We got our team coming. Uh, we got uh, Mr. Jones coming. He's going to be helping with the video. We got Vlad, our Russian connection with the video, uh, the world who is just a genius. We got Mr. Sayon Johnson, who will be interviewing our winners. The lovely Stacy McCammon, who has been putting a lot of this stuff together. So the team's been working really, really hard behind the scenes, Kenny, to get things up and going. So really, really excited about that. So what do you say, buddy? Let's 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 get to it. What was our um, what was our first post of the week, Kenny? Uh, Eric, the first post of the week was uh, U.S. DOE releases the uh, voluntary code of conduct for smart grid data, and uh, this is a very important thing. We've been uh, we've been talking this uh, up for. About two years uh, since it first came out, but uh, basically on January 12th, President Obama announced the release of the final concepts and principles for a voluntary code of conduct related to the privacy of cons customer energy us usage data for utilities and third parties. Uh, and this was a result of a 22-month multi-stakeholder effort, which was facilitated by the Energy Department Office of Electricity Delivery and Energy Reliability in coordination with the Federal Smart Grid Task Force. Uh, but basically, Eric, uh, this is going to kind of control, you know, how to, how we're treated as consumers, and uh, you know, basically, the background to the whole thing was U.S. intelligence. Uh, 
the deployment of advanced technologies and, and grid modernization efforts. The increased intelligence has led to concerns regarding consumer data access, the privacy of consumer energy consumption data, and uh, historically, utilities have taken very seriously the job of protecting customer privacy, and the privacy and security protection uh, will remain fundamental objectives. However, with the new technologies being deployed today, uh, you have everything imaginable to be dealing with, whether it's hackers or, or people abusing this voluntary code of conduct. So, but we'll keep it posted, and we've got the great links. I mean, we've actually have the links to the actual document itself, and for people uh, that you know have a greater desire to know more about it, um, just come to the Control Trends website. And hit the links and it'll take you right to it. No, Kenny, it's really good stuff. And, and I think the thing is, it's uh, very sort of idealistic. It's it's very voluntary, and those links will tell you all about it. But basically, it's about, uh, you know, how people can use your data, whether or not it's anonymous data or not. And also, you're right. So you can actually get access to this data and use it. So I, I think from that perspective, uh, very, very positive stuff, Kenny. So, But something that, you know, you just... You need to be informed about this because people are going to be using your data. Hell, Google knows more about me right now than any of my four ex-wives. So it's you know one of those things. You just better stay informed if you want to, if you if you want to, you want to be okay with that. So uh, so good post there, Kenny. Really appreciate the fact that you're keeping up with all that. So uh, keep up the good work there. And uh, what do we have up next, big dog? Well, next up was uh, Mr. Jones is getting ready. Uh, he voted for his control trends categories. Uh, and he's getting ready personally and professionally for the Control Trends Awards, and he gave us a little sneak peek. Hollywood has the Academy Awards. The music industry has the Grammys. Baseball has the All-Stars. Pro football has the Hall of Fame. Virtually any group of professionals has a way of honoring their superstars. People can see how, how how much fun it is and how how it really does add dimensions to the industry that we're in and uh, and it's mostly done through the people. You know, these are permanent uh, opportunities for people to get involved and show their involvement by attending. And then when you're attending there, you're going to have a great time and then become part of the Control Trends Awards legends. Right, Kenny. And the thing I love about him, uh, uh, Bill actually went back and found some of the video archives, which you just saw of, uh, you know, when we first started the awards, we came up with the idea for it, Kenny. And, and it really is about uh, every other industry has, um, you know, a way to celebrate the superstars in their industry. And, and we felt like that we needed something for our industry to celebrate the superstars. So that's where the Control Trends Awards came from. So that's that's where they came from, Kenny, and uh, really looking forward to the awards. It's going to be great this year, as we said before. So what do we have up next, Big Dog? All right, next up, Eric, we have Ron Voken. That's predictions for 2017. Uh, this is a very technically informative post uh, that talks about the evolution now of the data centers and how ASHRAE has changed um, the temperatures. The recommended temperatures have gone from uh, the 68 to 70 Fahrenheit range to a, a wi much wider swing of uh, the new ASH rate guidelines are saying 64.4 to 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit are now uh, you know the target temperature so uh, we see a greater span there and then just some general predictions but my favorite parts of this thing was he came up with some slogan some new sayings or whatever that uh, I think we're gonna have we're gonna hear uh, but he talked about the name and shame uh, the name and shaming of the Green Party and how if you are uh, an excessive energy user 
uh, people are going to call you out on it. The data center seems to be directly in the, uh, the sweet spot or the 10 uh, zone of, of the target for these people that know about the, the consumption of energy. So you, you hear more naming and shaming of the people that don't get on board with uh, an energy-saving uh, approach to data centers. And hang on, buddy. Hang on. Name and shame. Now, that sounds an awful lot like uh, back probably when you were a single guy and I was a single guy, man. Uh, <laughs> that name and shame, I, that, 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 that kind of makes me a little nervous. But uh, I tell you what, yeah, it's good stuff. And what he's saying, Kenny, among other things, is he's saying that a 1.8 degree temperature rise will equate to 3 to 4 percent energy savings across the entire uh, data facility, the da da data center. It's huge. But they're having big pushback yeah. on it. Another one of the great quotes in there is, nobody ever got fired for keeping a data center too cold. So there's a lot of pushback um, from, from, from the data centers. Now, the, the server huggers, uh, which is a great term, are people that basically do not believe in putting their data up on the cloud. They want to keep it internal. So apparently there's a lot that fosters a lot of competitions among the data centers. So uh, they talk about uh, uh, co-location, basically meaning that, that if you have some data you want to send, you can, you can share a data center with many other people. Apparently it's a very, very competitive market, Kenny. And so um, uh, what they're saying is, is not all... Um, not, you know, not all needs are, are similar. So a lot, since the co-location is very competitive price-wise, they're very reluctant to raise the temperature, even though ASHRAE says that it's okay. So Ron is predicting that even though there is 3 to 4% energy savings to be had by a 1.8 degree temperature rise, which is fully acceptable, he does not see the majority of the data farms um, uh, taking that on. So that's one trend he says. So he is basically saying he doesn't see any radical changes uh, throughout the year. He's seen maybe some incremental changes, but it's a, a big piece there. This is a very, very bright guy, and I have to thank Rick Warner, the innovator. Uh, Rick uh, has been on the show quite a bit. Rick, Rick does a lot in the white space, and Rick um, was the one who turned us on to uh, Ron's post. So be sure to check that out. But interesting stuff, Kenny. I, you, know, it, it, you know, we'll hear a little bit more in the, uh, the show from Philip Henderson about how uh, owners are reluctant to uh, necessarily make improvements and changes when things are working well. But, uh, but the operative quote here is, nobody got fired from a data center for having the data center too cold. So great post there. Be sure to check it out. And uh, so that's good stuff. Kenny, what, what do we have up next, big dog? Next up was the best way to control electrical plug loads. Uh, this was a seven minutes uh, in control with Rob Allen and Michael Bonner from the Stromquist company. Uh, Rob Allen's a really sharp guy, and this is just a fun post too, because it's uh, you know it brings in the human side of stuff. But the it's about the product called Plug It, and that's from EST. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I, I see this becoming more and more of, of a, a product that is becoming important in especially commercial and institutional applications because the plug it's a wireless smart plug load device that provides control and power measurement of your facility's equipment on when needed and off when it's not needed and there's some really interesting uh, facts and figures about this uh, primarily when you're talking about like schools hospitals people have to provide uh, vending uh, options you know the highway uh, when you get out of, you know out of your car uh, on a long drive to get some coffee and maybe candy bar or some chips or something these things uh, are, are on 24 7 and what the, this plug it allows you to do is save an enormous amount of money. We're talking about uh, you know radical savings where uh, you can save three to five hundred dollars a year on turning your vending machines off in non-duty hours. So if you're like uh, especially the government stuff with coffee pots, but but uh, a lot of places like schools, districts, they provide cokes, they provide uh, vending machines for their for their students. And for, for basketball games or whatever, but the bottom line is that when you turn those off, you're saving a tremendous amount of uh, electricity. And also with computers, I mean, we're talking, you could save $30 to $80 on computer monitors, especially if you have the older style, because uh, they're on and they're draining, they're taking electricity, they're plug-in loads, and you can turn those loads off and it's all done wirelessly. And probably the coolest thing about this for the Niagara community is that you can integrate this wirelessly to your Jace and then really bring it into your, your overall energy strategies and, uh, you know, energy efficiencies. All right, Kenny, you're about to get some big trouble. Turning coffee pots off, dude. I just got a call from the Pittsburgh police. They want to know where you live. They don't want you turning their coffee pots off, dude. You got to be careful with that. <laughs> so, uh, no, good stuff. I mean, we've talked about on the show before, one of the trends we're seeing, Kenny, is that things are coming back 
to the plug load, controlling at the plug load. This is a great product for that. Uh, it's inexpensive. Uh, it the payback on it's phenomenal, and and that's where we're going to see. That's where we're going to get the energy savings now. Is is hitting the plug loads uh, in addition to everything else that's going on. So, uh, well, here's a, here, Eric. Here's another very informative part. Water fountains, for instance. Uh, did you know water fountains cost? Uh, if you could say, my goodness, uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars a year per water fountain. So you're talking uh, with your vending machines and your water fountain. You could you know save. The paybacks are ridiculous. A uh, water fountain payback is nine months. Wow. Coffee makers yeah. is fifteen months. Vending machines is six months payback. So you are talking about it. It's window based, uh, and mostly the the programming is for the scheduling for the off and on times, and then uh, and then taking that information through your Wi-Fi network into your. Uh, your, your building workstation. Now, water fountains. Kane, let me just ask you a straight-up question. When was the last time you drank out of a water fountain? Those are kind of like pay phones, right? I mean, they're still around. So your point, I mean, I don't think many people use the water fountains anymore. Uh, most people, you know, get the bottled water, whatever. So, you know, having it on all the time, especially in off hours, is, is, is sort of ridiculous. So you're right. This is a very effective way to do it. These guys are up for a Control Trends Awards. You'll get to meet Scott Dight and the rest of his team at the 2014 Control Trends Awards in Chicago. But it's a great product, Kenny, and like I say, just another great opportunity to save energy. So, sure is. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What do we have up next, Big Dog? Well, next up is uh, one of our favorites. Uh, like you call him the James Brown of the HVAC automation industry. Mr. Roger Rebenack, and he goes over uh, the the Honeywell question: Can your building automation control system do this? And uh, he makes a very valid point that uh, Honeywell's uh, webs uh, system uh, may be the only company on the planet that combines building automation controls and access and security in one JACE. This is true integration of access, security, and building automation control from one source and one vendor. So. Uh, we have a lot of fun with Roger, but uh, when it gets down to it, he's, he's, a, he's a top notch professional. Uh, he, he supports both sides. He can do the marketing, he can do the presentations. But uh, in reality, he's he's uh, you know tr tr just technically competent because he's been doing it for all his life. He was a uh, a service ins installer for security systems. I think right out of high school, or he played I think he played some sports in college or whatever. But um, so he's got you know 30, 40 years of experience. And when he gets passionate about this, it's fun to watch because. Uh, it's a great product, and it really does do true, total integration from a single seat. So, good stuff. Hello, Roger Rebenack, a.k.a. the most exciting man in the controls industry, a.k.a. the designer of the Roger Rebenack experience in Indianapolis. Uh, Roger, Kenny, you're right. He's the hardest working guy in show business. He's passionate about the business. He loves what he does. He knows what he's doing. And Hi, I'm Roger Rebenack with Honeywell. Perhaps you've heard of me. And Honeywell, according to many, is the only company that can combine your BAS and H and access and security control in one box. We've had several jobs with them. It works really, really well, Kenny, as you know. And uh, Roger's a great guy. The Roger Ebenek experience, Roger's from Indianapolis. We've talked about him on the show before. Every year, he takes a group of customers up to the Indianapolis 500, and Roger knows everybody there. He's like the mayor of Indianapolis, Kenny. It's like he... Um, it's, it's like Kenny, you know, he knows everybody. He gets you in the pits. He knows everybody there. You get down on, on you know, it's it's a great experience. So uh, if no other reason, Honeywell has a great product. But to get to know Roger and work with Roger is a treat in and of itself. And I think, you know, sort of on the serious side of it, Kenny, the advantage to that is having everything in one bo box. There's some economic advantages to that. But now you've got one vendor you're dealing with, and it's easier for your systems integrator to work with it. They're able to be more efficient. If you don't use the Honeywell access and security solution, you're faced with having a building automation system by one vendor, an access and security system by another vendor. Anytime you get two vendors involved in anything, the opportunity for finger pointing comes up. So it's a very economical, proven solution. Uh, check the video out, you'll see. If you ever get a chance to meet Roger Rebenack, Stephen Haynes, John Hutchie, the rest of the team at Honeywell, you want to do it. They do a great job. So, uh, so Kenny, yeah, good stuff there. And we love Roger. He is, 
He's a pistol, huh? Or maybe more, sure. maybe, well, maybe, more like they, a, maybe more like a nuclear weapon. I don't know. Well, you know, they have so much fun, too. They just had a, a big old meeting down there uh, in Florida. And I understand Roger, Richard Bogle, uh, there's a couple other guys. They really are, are great musicians and, and uh, very talented entertainers. And they, they put on a, a well of a show. I wish, hopefully they record that and we get to see that somewhere. Maybe put it on a little bit on Control Trends. But uh, I hear they're, they're very talented. Roger's a great singer. Got a great Roger voice. is does, a great singer. He does the and blues and all the uh, other things. Yeah, he's sung on Control Trends before. Roger, we're calling you out, buddy. we got to get you back on Control Trends. Your audience wants to see you. I tell you what, would, would our friends in India get a big kick out of Roger or what, huh? <laughs> can you imagine that man with roger singing some of his songs and also roger we want to see you uh soon we can see roger rebenak and the rest of the team honeywell at the 2014 control trends awards roger will be the guy that'll walk up to a group of people and say wait till they get a load of me so he is something else all right kenny smyers what do we have up next all right, uh, next up, Eric, we have a kind of a, you know, give everybody some, some dates on the calendars that are becoming increasingly important. Uh, the next post is the 2015 Building Energy Summit, which is scheduled for March 25th, 2015, at the Ronald Reagan Building and International Trade Center on 1300 Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C. Uh, this is a meeting that shapes the future of efficient buildings, but there's a, uh, a call for the early bird signups, which will end uh, 31st of January. But this is a, a you know, I hope we, hope we can make it. Uh, there's just a, it's an event that was developed by the industry for the industry with 16 educational sessions, three plenaries, two keynote speakers, and plenty of network opportunities. But they go right deep into the uh, unlocking the energy uh, efficiency investment opportunity, net zero energy buildings, turning operational data into real value, corporate enterprise sustainability efforts, engaging tenants in, in the whole concept of getting energy conservation accomplished and done for the benefit of every all parties, the real value of building rating and certification, uh, solar renewables and um, energy alternatives. And uh, it's it's a group that we're familiar with. The sponsors for this is, uh, for instance, uh, Yardi Lobos, uh, the COR Advisors, Connex Energy, uh, Linkspring is going to be down there, United Technology, uh, just so it's a lot of the players that uh, you know go through the circles that we're in. So we're starting to see the overlapping, just like Realcom and IBCom. This is another major event that uh, just fits tailors right into the HVAC uh, industry. So that our our people that belong, you know that come to the control trends and, and read and listen to what we have to say have to be aware that these shows are another great network and possibly uh, learn a little bit more about the business and uh, generate more business. No, it's good stuff, Kenny. It's really, really good stuff. And, uh, you know, we like to say here, one of my teachers used to say, nothing is obvious to the uninformed. And I want to really thank you, Kenny, because you're keeping everybody up to date uh, on on these conferences. It's going to be good stuff. And I tell you what, Kenny, speaking of that, uh, get a load of this real quick. Take a, take a quick look at this. One of the key lessons is that it is, in fact, difficult to persuade a building owner who's operating an occupied building to engage in substantial improvements. It's a hard sell. You can do it. We have to do more of it. I have this statement that all buildings stray. Now, if the chiller were coming on at night, how would you know? And is there someone there to detect it? Would you detect it quickly or would it take months? And that period in between is the waste. It's disappointing that so many buildings waste 5 to 10 percent. But the great news is that that savings is available and it doesn't require construction and uh, rebuilding in the building. This chart, I think, is really interesting once you understand what it shows. So that's Phil Henderson. So, Kenny, uh, you know, getting into our last post here, this is uh, really something else because, uh, you know, this guy is one of the top guys in terms of getting stuff, getting stuff done regarding energy. He is speaking at Green Build, and he's talking about Vision 2020. So a couple of interesting statements that, that I'd like to comment on and get your, get your opinion. He is basically saying to reach these goals, okay, 80% of the buildings that, that, that are going to be there are already – uh, here. So it's a matter of retrofitting retrofitting these buildings and having them be more energy efficient. And he also acknowledges that selling end users getting up to update is very, very difficult. But, you know, as you can see, he's a big advocate of using data. 
Now, sure. Kenny, you know, that last graphic, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, what impresses me about that, and you can see it in the video, this is what he's advocating, that, that that's like seven different buildings that he has, uh, that, that he's advocating that a building owner or, or engineer goes through to try to determine which buildings are efficient or to detect a fault. And what we say in the post is, Philip. You and the people at Greenbuild need to reach out to the people in our industry because John Petsy at Sky Foundry, Eugene Mazzo, Jason Briggs. I mean, we got a whole host of them. I mean, Niagara's got their, their new product. They can do all this automatically for you. You don't have to have an engineer going through data, trying to normalize it, make sense of it. We can set it up for you right now. We can do rules-based technology where when that chiller's on, you'll know. If the heating and cooling are on at the same time, you'll know. But it's a great post from Philip. But what it what it says to me, Kenny, is there's quite an opportunity for our industry to reach out to these people because this guy, Phil Henderson, is one of the top guys that is involved with this. And, and he was speaking to, you know, at, at Green Build, which I've never been to. I'd, I'd like to check it out. It was architects. It was construction people. And basically part of his message, Kenny, like I said before, was that uh, – uh, you know, building new buildings that are in, more energy efficient is part of it, but 80% of the buildings that are going to be around at 2020 20, 20 and beyond are already built. And he is saying that uh, energy savings are routine. So if you look at that thing, what he's saying in different words is it really gets down to the operational savings, and that's where we shine with our integrators and with our technology. So, Mr. Henderson, please reach out. Meet John Petsy and the posse. We were being uh, you know, advised to get out and do more because much of the market is still untapped. I mean, uh, Jim Young said uh, in San Diego, we looked out over there at the intelligent smart buildings, and it's only a small fraction of the, even in the most intelligent city, with the most intelligent buildings, it's still not very many. You know, the percentages are very low. So that gives us, uh, you know, I think uh, it just, just fits uh, pretty well with everything we're trying to do. We're trying that, you know, we're still not really going to get, uh, you know, any impact unless we do our jobs better to get more building uh, owners involved. So the educational process, the technology, the social forces, and the economic, uh, economic forces all coming together in a triangle so that we can get more done. And uh, just a good, good presentation. That was a great presentation, Kenny, and I think it gets back to, you know, he does say in, in his video that, or his talk, that uh, convincing building owners to make those sorts of investments is hard, but it must be done. And that gets back to people like our friend Mark Jewell, who does uh, uh, training, and Mark has a, a lot of times said that the energy savings is a bonus, that it's really about the operational savings, and the owners have to be convinced. So there you have it. That's marching orders for our industry. And let's get busy and let's get it done. All right, Kenny Smyers, I tell you what, I uh, want to go off topic a little one bit. Final thought, Eric. One, one final thought on it, Eric. One, more, one, one final thought on it is that even the, indicate, even the things that he pointed out in the, in the videos, were like the chiller uh, staying on all night, about a sensor going bad, about being, uh, you know, having heating and cooling on at the same time, these were the small stuff. In other words, this isn't the really great you know, challenging engineering feats. You know, uh, th these are little sparks, like uh, John Petsy says in Sky Foundry. These are things that, you know, if you wrote, uh, you know, some sort of a, uh, you know, some sort of a monitoring, you know, so you're monitoring specific points and looking for anomalies if something stays on too much or you've got heating and cooling at the same time or it's probable that a valve stuck open. These are very fixable. That's, uh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to uh, cut That's you off. Right. I, just, I just thought it was a really good, uh, you know, how it, we heard it from him. He, his, in his words, it wasn't a sales pitch. This is a fact. These are, these are what's costing everybody money and making these big buildings inefficient. I got you, Kenny. So with that, I do want to go off topic for a minute, and I want to reach out to our Control Trends audience. I mean, if anybody out there knows how to do video and can help me and Kenny, I tell you what, I have probably spent 30 hours this week trying to get this, uh, this video podcast queued up. We've tried everything from FaceTime to Google Hangouts. Now we're back on Skype. So uh, I'll apologize in advance for the uh, for the, uh, the the video. I mean, it's just a, we just have a hard time with the video feed with Skype, which is what why we're trying to use something else. So uh, that's why we're going to continue with the podcast. The podcast will have better audio. If if you listen to this, you know that Kenny broke up a couple of times. We apologize, but we're going to get better at it. But if there's anybody out there that understands this and can help us, I sure would appreciate your help. Reach out in comments. Let me know. And uh, with that, Kenny Smyers. Anything else before we wrap it up, Big Dog? No, that's it, Eric. Uh, looking forward to seeing everybody in Chicago uh, Monday, January 26th, between 6 and 8 o'clock. 
It's going to be great there, buddy. And I think our control talk now next week will probably be live from Chicago because you and I both get on Sunday, Kenny. So we'll probably Sunday night we'll try to do a live version of control talk now. And with that, we appreciate you guys tuning in. You've been listening to Control Talk Now, the Smart Buildings podcast and video cast. So with that, have a great week. And remember, stay in control. Indeed, Eric. Indeed, Kenny Smyers. Oh, dude.